finding my way. Please open my eyes and heart to the direction you want me to take. Help me to make wise decisions that will lead me closer to your path for my life. Give me the strength and courage to persevere when times are difficult. Lead me with your truth and love, so that I may live a life that brings glory to your name. Thank you for your guidance and protection. Amen. One, a profound change in the organization of social systems or global political power, such as the improved cooperation between formerly hostile countries after the end of the Cold War. Two, new world order. A, a hypothetical, secretly developing, global reorganization of social, political, and economic systems in the direction of totalitarianism, as posited by a conspiracy theory. B, the conspiracy theory that posits this reorganization. The New World Order is a conspiracy theory which posits a new period of history bringing about a major change in the world with the balance of world power. This New World Order is theorized by some to involve a group or groups of elitist people bent on ruling the world through a single worldwide system of government. The appeal of this New World Order lies in its proposal to free the world of wars and political strife, and its promises to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. Also labeled the new era of globalization, this new world order will supposedly do away with the need for diverse world governments. This will be accomplished by the installation of a one world political system or body. One means to achieve this is by eliminating all lines and borders demarcating the nations of the world. To effect all this change, it is believed that the new world order will emphasize tolerance through the promotion and acceptance of other cultures and their values and ideologies. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity and oneness with all people speaking the same language. Other objectives include the use of a single, worldwide currency, as well as oneness in politics, religion, and moral values. As a result, conspiracy theorists believe, the world will be under one rule, that of one government that promises worldwide peace, the absence of war, and the elimination of all political unrest. Though it may be agreed that man needs hope in order to endure this life and have peace of mind, the problem lies in where man searches for such hope. The scriptures are clear concerning all these things. As Christians, we are commanded to obey and respect those in authority, including our government. However, we can easily see that there are some severe consequences of such a new world order, both from an economic and a religious standpoint, Romans chapter 13 verses 1 to 7, Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Romans chapter 13 verses 1 to 7. King James Version 13 Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. To whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. 3 For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. 4 For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doth evil. 5 Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. 6 For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. 7 Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Acts chapter 5 verse 29. King James version 29 Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The problem with the acceptance and approval of any new world order is that no government has ever offered, nor will it ever offer, real hope and peace for mankind. When man turns to government to provide worldwide peace and hope, he becomes disillusioned and enslaved by its false promises. History has proven time and again that no quasi-world empire has ever survived, simply because of its innate flaws of greed, corruption, and quest for power. Those who desire the ushering in of a new world order, whether secular or religious, are in for a rude awakening. The truth is that false religious teachings cannot bring utopia into being, regardless of man's creativity and ingenuity. Only heaven brings lasting peace and happiness. The Bible makes it very clear that all things associated with this life on earth with its sufferings, its decay, its discontent, and death will continue with this physical life, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. It is also clear that all these things are completely unknown in the heavenly city, Revelation chapter 21 verses 3 to 7 and Revelation chapter 22. They will be done away with. 
Yes, hope is needed. But it is the hope of heaven we need, not the false hope of a new world order. The one hope for all believers lies only in heaven, John chapter 14 verses 1 to 4. It is not here on this earth. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16. King James Version 16 For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. King James Version 27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Revelation chapter 21 verses 3 to 7. King James Version 3 And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. For in God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 5 And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. 6 And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. 7 He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Read full chapter. Revelation chapter 22. King James Version 22 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Two in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Three and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Four and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Five and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. 6 And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. 7 Behold, I come quickly, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. 8 And first John saw these things, and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. 9 Then saith he unto me, See thou to it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. 10 And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. 11 He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. 12 And, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. 13 I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. 14 Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. 15 For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 16 I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. 17 And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. 18 For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. 19 And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. 20 He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. 21 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We thank you that even though we have our own idea of how our life should look, often setting out according to our plans, that your ultimate purpose prevails. We ask that you prompt us when we set out to make plans that we make them according to your will, and not our own. We ask that you remind us to come alongside you as we surrender every detail to fulfill your greater purpose. Please align our hearts with yours, our ideas with yours, and our will with yours. For your ways are higher than ours and your plans are greater than ours, and nothing is impossible with you. Lead us every step of the way. In Jesus' name, Amen.